And um, I want to thank you for your hard work and your leadership. Uh, I want to thank everyone at Action Network and, and to all of our amazing union affiliates who are here, partners, collaborators. Um, I think um, this is the, the prime example of how partnership works. Um, and again, I am Liz Schuler, Secretary Treasurer of the AFL-CIO. I never take for granted that everyone knows what that alphabet soup means. Um, we're a federation of 12 and a half million working people in unions all across the country and across all sectors of the economy. And I don't know about y'all, but I've been watching the Olympics and I have been so inspired by these athletes who are so focused, so single-minded in their training, their dedication, their time, their energy, their passion, all in the pursuit of a specific goal. And it reminded me of the purpose of this conference and the people who are chatting, uh, you know, in, in the chat and, and participating today, because we are all laser focused on the goal of making life better for working people and creating a better world. And we can't do that unless we grow unions and expand collective power into the hands of working people in workplaces all across this country. And especially in the emerging sectors of the economy where there really aren't any unions. And that's what I call this, the next frontier of the labor movement. Because we have seen what happens as union density has decreased, you probably have seen that chart, right? Where you see the drop in union density and you see the line going upward of inequality. Income inequality has skyrocketed as union density has declined. And we've been through a lot, right? We've weathered economic disasters, racial trauma and violence, and a global pandemic. But we keep fighting back. We do not give up. We stand up and we organize into action. And people are starting to see it. People who have never looked our way before are starting to see that the labor movement is the single most powerful counterweight that can balance the scales and reverse this trend. To shrink inequality, we have to grow union density. And as we do, we will fuel the most powerful vehicle for progress, power for gender equity, power for civil rights, racial justice, and to protect our democracy. And I truly believe this is our moment. And we're all organizers, right? I remember the first house call that I made on an organizing campaign, and it was so thrilling to be in this woman's living room, right? The fact that she trusted me, she invited me in and she was sharing how she was feeling, you know, about things at work. And I was listening so deeply. And I remembered I was trying to capture everything in my mind. And she was talking about how unfair it was that her boss was giving overtime opportunities to some coworkers and not others based on who the boss liked. And she was talking about all the people on the job who were pro-union, you know, how it seemed like there was real momentum building for the campaign. And I remember I left the house and I was trying to, you know, write all of it on paper, download while it was fresh in my mind. And I got my notes back to the lead organizer who was not, shall I say, the most organized organizer. Um, because as I was as downloading all of this, my heart kind of sank because he basically just honed in on how this, you know, all of my conversations, how each individual was ranked on, you know, the scale of support and all of the rest of that Intel that I collected was not going to make it past go, you know, the richness of that conversation was not being captured to help us build out our strategy. And I know many of you feel the same way. And I would say until a few years ago, 
those days of clipboards and sticky notes and paper everywhere really hadn't evolved that much. We were using software from before Y2K. <laughs> Some unions still are. But Action Builder has been a game changer because it is a tool built by and for organizers. And it brings tried and true tactics that organizers have used for centuries to build power up to date into this century. And Action Builder really frees up time and it reshifts the focus from data management to where it belongs. And that's on the conversations and building relationships. And another thing that I really love about this tool is it empowers and democratizes organizing. What do I mean by that? Well, it makes it more accessible for people who have historically been on the margins, women, people of color, young people, people who have never organized before. It allows more people to participate and capture the information instead of it just being an exclusive circle. And Martha will tell you, she has talked to many an organizer who is not very tech savvy. And that's what we hear a lot is like, oh, it's technology, you know. But once the tool gets into organizers' hands, they all say to a person how easy it is to use. And the most groundbreaking thing about Action Builder is that I think it can be a model for how we organize writ large because of how it was developed. So we brought unlikely people with different skills and approaches to one table. And we created this powerful tool the right way the first time. So the AFL-CIO partnered with Action Network and affiliated unions to build it together from the ground up. And we started by asking organizers, what do you need to organize better? What a concept, right? Ask the people who are doing the organizing before you launch the tool. We didn't just buy something you know, off the shelf and say, here, use this. We picked their brains, we got in a room. And I'll just acknowledge the affiliates um, affiliated unions, uh, many of whom are on this um, convening, uh, just saying thank you for taking a risk. AFGE, AFSME, AFT, Boilermakers, CWA, Machinists, IATSE, IBEW, Operating Engineers, Iron Workers, OPEIU, RWDSU, SMART, and UAW were the early pioneers at the table um, month after month building it, refining it, improving it. So it's a lot of work uh, and the design and the development process, as I said, embedded real organizers with tech gurus working hand in hand. And that is just extremely rare. And we're gonna hear, I know later um, about that collaborative building process from Jennifer and Adrian of IBW, uh, Brienne and Adam of RWDSU, Jason of UAW. So you'll get to hear about it firsthand. Um, they'll also be spotlighting the action builder difference in the field, which I know is so critically important as I'm seeing in the chat, you know, people are looking for those game changers. Teaser, uh, it involves about a billion less piles of paper. So that should uh, pique your interest right away. <laughs> but I wanted to highlight that because of this process, another groundbreaking result was that unions were able to learn from each other and share their organizing best practices in a safe space. It kind of disarmed people to be at this table building this tool together. And as a result, people were sharing right? They let their guard down a little bit more. And I think that's one of the AFL-CIO's superpowers, to be honest, is that we can be conveners and collaborators to create those organizing breakthroughs. And that is how we build our movement solidarity and with it, our power. And I think Action Builder is a case study 
in labor innovation, right? A lot of people think the labor movement is, you know, old school, we're kind of outdated and outmoded. No, this is about union innovation. And when unions innovate, it impacts everyone. That is part of our history, right? Think back, picture the days of grim and dangerous factories and mills, endless work days, no concept of having a life away from work. That was inhuman, it was unsustainable. And to our movement, it was unacceptable. So what did we do? We got creative, we innovated, we invented the weekend. It was a response to major changes in our economy and in our society. It happened back then and it's happening again today. Changes have accelerated in the pandemic. Action Builder is an innovation that we're using to organize the change that we need. And we talk a lot about collective action. I know in the labor movement and I know our partners know that collective action is, is the most powerful tool we have. But to get there, we need collective creation. And Action Builder is a prime example of that. We want worker perspectives embedded at every stage of technology development, not just at the end, as an afterthought. Because when you co-create, when you build technology with the people who have a stake in how it's going to be used, of course, it's gonna be more powerful and more effective. And technology is changing work all around us now. And we have to make sure that the focus on new technology doesn't come at the expense of the humans who are working to actually allow that innovation to function in the real world. And one example I'll throw out there, classic, a hospital introduced technology to try and predict the patient's risk of sepsis. But the tech development team didn't involve the nurses. So when the technology was put to use, not only were the nurses doing their regular demanding work of caring for the patient, but they also had to do the technology repair work. The developers didn't factor in the work required to make the tech actually effective. And there are countless examples of how that goes wrong. But Action Builder is an example of the co-creation we want so that technology helps workers, not holds them back. And so technology empowers us rather than exploits us especially when it comes to union busting, because we know what we're up against, right? We know how corporations spy on workers. They have all the data and the data infrastructure to interpret it. And they know if you've Googled, you know, how to start a union <laughs> on the company Wi-Fi, they spend millions of dollars on union busting. Think of Amazon, right? The poster child, the company, the cut hazard pay during a pandemic when workers were on the front lines and more in demand than ever. And then Amazon shells out thousands of dollars a day to anti-union consultants to sabotage a union drive of predominantly black warehouse workers in Bessemer, Alabama. Well, that union drive, RWDSU led, was powerful. It was inspiring. And it was just the beginning. And organizers said it wouldn't have been possible without Action Builder. And the tech sector itself is one of the biggest growth sectors where there is essentially zero union density. But interestingly, um, there was a recent survey that found that half of all tech workers want a union. And more than any other generation in the workforce, millennials are the most interested in joining unions. More than 60% of millennials say they would join a union tomorrow. This is our opportunity. And tech workers who are 
right now working with AFL-CIO unions to organize are using Action Builder. So we're putting our tech to the test uh, with tech workers who are trying to organize. But to unleash massive growth in union organizing, we need to remove the other barriers that are in the way. We need to pass the PRO Act because it would hold companies accountable with real penalties when they violate the law during union campaigns. And it would remove the intimidation and the fear of getting fired. As you know, most workers get fired when they try to organize. So what is there beyond fear? Empowerment. The PRO Act is worker empowerment legislation. An action builder is worker empowerment technology. Just imagine the progress that we can make for the 99%, those of us who are not going to space, when we pass the PRO Act and we scale up Action Builder. We can lift up millions of working people. And we saw so much innovation in the ways our affiliates used Action Builder through the pandemic. Just a few examples that, you know, IATSE, Stage and theatrical, uh, used it to help members navigate unemployment systems. Uh, in my home state of Oregon, they even organized a kale exchange delivery for members. I think it's such a great example of young organizers who were innovating. And Action Builder enables it. With less layers, less bureaucracy, it's not top down. It gives people who were maybe you know, more behind the scenes, gives them the ability to make a difference because often quiet strengths feed into the important process for growing a union. And thanks to Action Builder, that person at the back of the meeting might be out organizing everyone else. And if you couldn't tell, I'm a big fan of this tool, but the one thing I wanna leave you with is the amazing potential there is to seize and create opportunities for growth and innovation and how urgent it is to be throwing everything we have into organizing, to resource it, to build that bench of organizers and invest in the tools we need to build a bigger, bolder and stronger movement for all working people in this country. I can't wait to see where we go from here. Have a great convening and thank you so much. Thank you so much, Liz. Uh, Jeff just dropped the link in the chat um, and we're so excited for you to join the rest of our session. So click that link, hop on over and we'll see you there. Thank you, Liz. I couldn't imagine a better kickoff.